you need to look at the previous video, slopes and slope processes, before this one. Right, so, if we're looking now at the influence of gravity on a slope, and this is really what it's all about, the processes we're talking about are called mass wasting. Now, who came up with that phrase? I have no idea. But mass refers to large bodies of material moving under the influence of gravity. Wasting, I suppose you could say, is just another word for erosion. Now up here, where the terrain is flat, there is a little bit of a slope and you're going to have a very slow movement of soil down that slope. It's not tightly connected to the underlying hard rock and you're going to get a process called soil creep. Now that's partly dependent on the amount of moisture in the soil and things like that and where the soil is bonded together by vegetation so we can put in a bit of vegetation over here perhaps a lot of grass holding it together and so it's going to move as a single unit as it gets so particularly at the edges where the slope starts to get steeper that's going to go on the picture shows soil creep at the top of a slope on very thin soil you can see the grass is broken up into blocks as it starts to move in blocks down the slope so very, very slow process. Then you have, as we go down the slope, and I'm going to go into soil creep in more detail in different circumstances. I'm just illustrating now, showing you the different kind of things that are going on. Here you've got the weight of the rock itself. Huge amount of weight of rock, the mass of the rock pushing down. Now if you've got a vertical face, that pressure is going to push outwards as well. So if you've got pressure pushing outwards here, and the deeper you go down here, the higher the pressure, what's going to happen is that this is going to crack off. You are going to get joints like that, and bits of that are going to fall off. And then you get at the opposite end of the scale. You've got soil creep up there, very slow process, maybe only a few millimeters a year. And here, you're going to have rock falling off, and guess what we call it? We call it a rock fall. Now those are the two extremes. Soil creep is a very slow, organized process. You can see the ways of measuring it. You can see the whole body of soil is moving down as one unit together. Whereas a rock fall, you're going to get a few boulders falling off and bouncing down the slope. And that's chaotic and disorganized and very rapid. So in between those slow process and the fast process of the rock fall, we have a number of other processes. Within the Taylor slope, you also get, um, depending again on the kind of rock underneath and the thickness of the soil and the amount of moisture, again you've got pressure from below because of the, of the weight of the overlying rocks, and so you get pressure systems like this. And that can lead to what we call slumping, where if there's moisture, say there's moisture coming along the, the boundaries between the hard and soft layers, and moisture lubricates this, and you get a whole body of this rotating outwards and downwards. And that may be a fairly rapid process. If soil creep is millimeters per year, slumping, rotational slumping like this may be a few meters in a minute. It may happen very quickly, but generally it'll be a process that takes maybe months or even years to happen but it does move a very large amount of material. So we have slumps. And as we go down the slope some more, and again, just to point out that I'm illustrating the kind of stuff, we'll go into each of these in more detail. When you get onto the low flat surface, there's not a lot of potential energy left, and the only thing that's really going to do any moving here is rainwater. So water running on the surface is going to be able to move material. So we are going to get surface flow and the process is called sheet wash where particularly in a more arid environment where there's not a lot of vegetation if the vegetation is sort of spaced out a few clumps of grass you're going to get water flowing in a sheet and moving the finer material out of there. Um, and that obviously is dependent upon rain happening and so on. Now all of these are part of this process of mass wasting. So let's have a closer look then at 
soil creep. Soil creep comes in a number of forms, but it's you can see it very clearly very often. If you've got a fairly steep slope and there's a roadway that's been cut into that slope and it carries on down like that. And next to roadways, what do we have? People may plant trees or they may put in telephone lines. Now if you've got a layer of soil that looks like this and the soil is moving, what's going to happen to the tree and the telephone line? The tree, of course, is anchored as well in deeper soils. This, this may not be anchored, but the point is it becomes unstable. So you're going to, where you put in a cutting, you're going to get stuff falling off and your telephone pole is going to fall over. But the tree is going to do something rather strange because as it falls, trees also like to grow upwards. So what that tree looks like is does this. So as the trunk gets pushed over, the tree bends upwards. So if you see a tree on a slope that has got a curved trunk like that, where it's curving upwards, then you know that the soil is moving downhill. And you can use this to calculate all that to calculate the rate of soil movement. If you put in a, a whole lot of stakes here and you can measure them and then you can time the process as it goes downhill. Now that as I said is a very slow process, maybe a few millimeters a year. Perhaps a little bit faster process and a little bit different in some ways is if again we take that same idea of a slope and we look at the way there's your steep rock surface. I've maybe made it a bit too steep. But as it gets steeper, then you get that rotational movement that I talked about. And so your soil forms little terraces like this. Each one of those little steps, and this step may be half a meter high, or kind of five meters, about half a meter high each little step. Or smaller, maybe sometimes a bit higher. Each of those represents a little gravity slump and sometimes these look like pathways if you look at the front of the slope you'll see a whole lot of these little terraces sometimes they connect sometimes they're not and in fact I was taught when I was at school by a teacher who didn't, wasn't absolutely sure as what was going on he said they were goat paths um, and then when I got to university I learned that that wasn't true so as teachers we can't always be right um, and that's why you must always ask questions if you think that something's not right ask the question they look like goat paths going along the slope but if you dig it open and you look at it carefully you will find this is the kind of structure now this process here is called terra set a terra set being a little terrace terra set formation and that is a that is a component if you like of soil creep it's a faster version so this might be one millimeter per year and maybe this would be say five millimeters per year and a lot of this we don't really know what the rates are but the point is that it's very slow there is nothing catastrophic about this and um, it doesn't necessarily represent an unhealthy soil what we do see with this though is that on top of each of these terrace sets we get grass growing. Now the grass serves to keep it together and this is one of the reasons you would realize that these are not goat paths because if they were goat paths then there would be no vegetation on top of the terrace and maybe grass on the side but with terrace sets the bare surface is the vertical surface so clearly they're not formed by goats. Speeding up the process a bit Let's have a look now at slumping. Now slumping is quite interesting because usually it involves again a pretty steep slope but it also involves thicker soil and almost always as well you need a source of moisture. So perhaps coming in here from the side there would be a layer of rock or between two layers of rock you would get some moisture. And that moisture would accumulate along the boundary between the soil and the rock. So now you've got something to lubricate the movement. You've still got that same idea that gravity is pushing straight down. 
and the weight on top and the angle is going to cause a force in that direction. And the net result is that where there's moisture, you get a lot of moisture here, this is going to want to slip, that's going to cause a fracture, a break, and it's going to slip in a rotational form like that. And what happens is that that whole body then slips down and around, and after the slip, it looks like this. Typical bulbous mass, and that rotates down and around. So that is called a rotational slump. Now this can happen in a few minutes, um, even a few seconds. And I've seen them on scales varying from one meter to hundreds of meters. So they can be huge, they can be small. And once again your vegetation on top here acts to keep it all together. Can't obviously stop the soil breaking, but when it does break, it slumps with the vegetation on it. And only down here in the front might you get a little bit of breaking up. So it'll break up in the front there because it's meeting resistance from the slope that it's going down. But you can see this very clearly, that the whole thing stays together as a unit. And when it stays together, the movement stays together with soil creep or with terracets, then we call the movement organized. It's not chaotic. It happens in a predictable, smooth way. Or another word we could use is, say, co meaning together, adhesive sticking together. It doesn't break up. So this is your time scale, perhaps up to an hour. Beyond that, then, things start to get a lot more exciting, if you like exciting, of course. So once again, let's have a look at our slope in terms of a single slope element, a steep slope. And now we may have a whole lot of other things going on as well. Let's imagine that there's a whole lot of rocks. Now what are the rocks going to do? They're going to prevent the formation of a nice organized rotational slump. This would be typical of a tailless slope. But there's still a lot of soil here. And perhaps, once again, we've got water being injected through joints or cracks or faults or something like that. There's a source of water. So that water is now going to go through all of this. And it has some natural strength. It's not just going to start flowing immediately. And once again, we may have a boundary between the rubble, the talus, and the underlying rock, which very often may be something like shale or clay, which is slippery. And all these bits of rock have fallen from a free face above. So what happens here is that eventually you reach the point where the finer material, particularly clay, between the rocks, is going to come almost liquid. And that can happen very quickly. If you give it a bit of a shake, then suddenly the bonds with all the water and everything mixed up with it break. And this thing then, instead of going into a nice, neat rotational slump, it just charges off down the hill in a completely chaotic fashion. And that can happen very rapid. And this, of course, depending on exactly what this is made up of, can be everything from very fine mud to rocks or whatever, but it is chaotic. It is not organized. It's not cohesive. So this is a disorganized. And what is it going to be? In this case, it will be a debris flow because it's a mixture of big and small pieces. If it was just rocks, it would be a rock flow or a rock fall, debris fall, rock fall, mud, mud fall. So debris slide, rock slide, or mud slide. And of course, it depends on all sorts of things. This could be triggered, as I say, by water seeping in and then a little bit of an earth tremor or very heavy rain, all sorts of things. And if you've got, say, forestry going on, and there were trees here holding all this together. And then somebody comes and cuts down the trees and the roots die. And then suddenly there's nothing holding the slope together. Um, or somebody could come along and, and put a road cutting in and make it unstable. It usually needs something to make it unstable. They do happen in nature. 
And if you go into natural environments that are high energy, like in the canyon landscapes that we've talked about, or places like Oroby Gorge, you can see the scars on the landscape where these things have happened. So that is the sort of scale of process that we're talking about. It's to do with potential energy and gravity called mass wasting and we start with very slow processes. It's dependent upon the angle of the slope. It's dependent upon the amount of moisture, the thickness of the soil, the vegetation cover and it goes from very very slow to very very rapid and destructive. Mudslides are horrendous things and they may well be mixed up with melted snow and volcanic activity and all sorts of other things as well.